Alright, what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we're going to learn how to code a to-do list app in Python. If you are looking forward to it, go ahead and hit that like button. And without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. All right, so first I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Python environment here. I use Replit, which is just a really nice online um, Python or whatever language editor. <laughs> you can use whatever environment you want, obviously. Um, and I'm just gonna create the project and call it um, to-do list app Python. All right, guys, the first thing we're gonna do once our environment is loaded up here is just create a array and call it tasks. And then we're going to create a main method here. So if double underscore name, double underscore is equal to, and then quotes here, double underscore main, double underscore, and then go ahead and add that colon there. So we have our main method here for Python, and let's just begin to create the logic that will actually operate the app. So we're gonna say create a loop to run the app. And before that, we're going to have a welcome statement. So we're gonna just um, say, welcome to the to-do list app with a smiley face. And then we're going to have a while loop that just is always true. That way it runs infinitely until we tell it to stop. And then we're just going to start out by listing out some menu options here. So we're just gonna print a, a new line character here. And obviously I know I could keep typing afterwards, but I, I just like to put stuff on separate lines because it just looks a little cleaner to me. Do whatever you'd like, but we're gonna start out with a, um, a new line character. Then we're going to say, please select one, oops, select one of the following options. And then this other line here, we're just going to have a bunch of dashed lines so that we have a nice little like um, menu option and, and it just looks clean. And then we're going to have four total task options. So what I'm going to do is just say print and then put the number one and then close in quotes and this. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy this item here. I'm going to paste this a couple more times. Two, three, four. Our first option is going to be add a new task. Our second option is going to be delete a task. Our third option is going to be list tasks. And then our fourth option is going to be quit. All right, now that we've actually listed out the menu options, let's just go ahead and collect some input from the user. So we're gonna say choice is equal to input. And then we're going to say, enter your choice with a little caret symbol. That way that they kind of feel like it's a console type thing, or you know what, we could do a colon and space as well. doesn't matter which one, you guys can do whatever you'd like. Now the next thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and create the if and else statements to run the app based on what the user put. So obviously we're expecting them to put one, two, three, or four. Um, we're just using this input um, function, which will return a string. So that's what we need to keep in mind when building these if statements. So we're gonna say if the choice is equal to the number one, then we're going to do one thing and then have an else if. So if the choice is equal to two, then we're going to do another thing, then another one. So if the choice is equal to three, and I mean, you guys get it at this point, we could just keep going here. So number four, do another thing. And then if they happen to do anything else, but one, two, three, or four, what we should do is say else, and then just go ahead and print a simple error statement. So we're gonna say invalid input, please try again. And because this isn't a loop, it's going to just loop again and then they can go ahead and try again. So now let's actually fill up our if statements here. And the first one, so if the choice is number one and we go up here, we notice that it's going to say add a new task. And what I wanna do is just go ahead and call functions for each one of these if and else statements. So we're just going to have a function called add task and we're just gonna call that. And then that'll be in charge of collecting the input, you know, modifying the necessary variables and stuff. Um, for choice number two, we're gonna have delete task, and that's going to do the same thing, you know, collect all, all the necessary things. Number three, we're going to list tasks. And then number four, we're just gonna have a simple break. We want it to break right out of this loop here and then ultimately end the game. Or sorry, end, end the app, not the game. So the last thing we need to do here before we go ahead and write all of our functions is if we do hit number four and they break out of the loop, I feel like it's a good idea to just have like a goodbye statement or something. So we're just gonna say print and then goodbye. And why don't we just put some emojis in here? We're gonna wave our hand. We're gonna wave our hands to the user. So we're gonna say goodbye if they happen to select choice number four. So we're gonna have a couple lines of space up here. And then we're gonna say def add task. 
and then create a or put a colon here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say task is equal to input. And we're going to say, please enter a task that you want to complete with a colon and a space. Then once we are done collecting the task from the user, we're going to just go ahead and take our tasks um, array from above and then go ahead and append our new task that we just got from the user. And then one more thing we need to do in here, um, I just like to print out just kind of like a little confirmation type deal. So we're going to say, hey, and make sure to put the F in, in front of the string so that we can insert variables into it. Um, we're going to say task and then put in these brackets here, T-A-S-K, and then closing brackets. So task whatever has been added to the list. Man, this, this IntelliSense is getting pretty accurate um, so far. But also, we should put single quotes around task. That way that it just really stands out compared to the rest of the sentence. And whatever they entered in will appear here in single quotes. All right, next up, let's just go ahead and create our deletion of tasks. And we call that delete task down here. So let's just go ahead and do that and open up these parentheses and have a colon. So the first thing we want to do inside of delete task is probably just list the tasks that are um, currently in the task array. Since we eventually plan on coding a list tasks function, I think it would be best to just call that right here. So we're going to call that function, which we still have to write. Then we're going to have a try and an accept block here. And the reason I'm doing this is because there is a chance that the input we're about to collect um, is invalid and could break things. In case that happens, I'm just going to have this little um, catch here and just say invalid input. That's, you know, that way the user can kind of just try again after that. So the first thing we're going to do inside of this try block here is our task to delete is going to be equal to an integer and then our input thing from earlier. So we're going to call input and or let's let's back it up. So we're going to first list the tasks that are out there. Then we want the user to provide us some sort of number. Because once we have our tasks, we're going to say like, hey, task number one is, you know, go get the groceries. Number two is take out the garbage. So we expect some sort of number. So not only do we need to prompt them for input with this input function, but then once that happens, we need to cast it to an integer. That way we can access that index in the array and then delete it. So now that we have that out of the way, um, what we want to say in here is choose the number of the task you want to delete with a colon and a space. Or you know what, if we could probably simplify, this is quite a long statement here. So we're gonna say um, enter, why don't we just say enter the number. That way it's just simple and easy to understand. Then the first thing we should do is go ahead and check if the number they provided. So obviously at this point, if they provided an invalid number, it would have already hit the accept block and then you know we would have to do this again. So at this point, we don't need to check for anything fancy. But what we do need to check is if the task to delete integer that they provided is greater than the length of tasks. And if that's so, obviously it's not inside of the tasks array, and that could throw another error. So we want to just go ahead and you know check for that right off the bat. And actually, now that I'm thinking through it, what we really should do is make sure that it's less than the length of tasks. That way, um, anything between zero and the length of the tasks array, we'll just go ahead and process. And then anything outside of that, we're going to go ahead and just fire off an error. So we're going to say else. And then we're going to say print with an F in front of the double quotes. And then we're going to say task. And then put the variable. So task, task to delete. And we'll put a little hashtag in front of it so that we know that the number, it's a number. And then task number to delete was not found and then a period. So inside of this if statement here, what we're going to want to do is just go ahead and say tasks.pop and then task to delete. So this dot pop function here is going to allow us to specify the index of what we want to delete. So if I'm saying, you know, if I print out my list and item number two is what I want to delete, we're going to collect two and we're going to say, hey, go ahead and remove index number two from the array. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and just print out like a little confirmation thing. We're going to say task. And then once again, task to delete has been removed with a period. And guys, one more check that we can actually do is 
Not only should it be less than the length of tasks, but it should also be greater than or equal to zero. That way they don't provide any sort of negative numbers here. So we're gonna say if the task to delete is greater than or equal to zero and the task to delete is less than that, then we can go ahead and process it. And it, you know, if it's anything else, then we wanna go ahead and just say that it, it was not found. So it's gonna wrap up our delete task um, function here. Now, right above it, why don't we create another function called list tasks. And this will be in charge of printing out all the tasks that live inside of the array currently. So the first thing we should do is just check if anything's actually in the array. So we're gonna say, hey, if not tasks, so if it's still null or blank or whatever, we're just gonna say print, there are no tasks currently. But in this else here, if there are tasks, we wanna go ahead and start printing out each one. So first we're gonna have a little print line here and we're gonna say current tasks with a colon. Then we're going to say for index. Um, index is the number of the, of the loop that we're currently in. Cause you know, most for loops, you tell it where to start and end. And in Python, there's a couple different ways to do a for loop, but since we wanna keep that number, you know, usable for our code later. We want to say index, and then we're going to say space task in, and then enumerate, and then tasks. And this enumerate function will allow us to go through the list and not only access each individual task, but then we can also have that index for where it lives in here. And all we're going to do is just have a print line here, and then put F in the double quotes, so we're gonna first say task and then the pound symbol. And then in quotes, or sorry, in brackets here, we're gonna first put our index. And then we're going to do a dot and a space and then the name of the task itself. So ultimately when this prints out stuff, it should look something like this. It should be like, you know, it should be task number one dot and then like, you know, take out the groceries or something like that. So that, that way it will just look nice and clean and easy to read for our user. All right, guys, at this point, our program is done. So let's just go ahead and run it and make sure that everything is working as expected. So we're just gonna go ahead and click the run button here. Welcome to our to-do list app. Please select one of the following options. Um, obviously we don't have any tasks in there at this point. So, and just to make sure we can press number three. So we're gonna list our tasks and we see there are no tasks currently. So now it, you notice it reprints the menu. Uh, why don't we just add something new? Um, you know, let's see, uh, we want to go to the grocery store. So now we see that that worked successfully. You know, it's been added to the list. If we print out our list, we notice that task zero is go to the grocery store. We won't modify the code here in this video, but if you guys want, you can say, you know, plus one in in your list function or, or wherever, if you'd rather start at one than zero, but I'm perfectly fine with zero, so I'm just gonna leave it for now. But if we wanna go ahead and delete a task, let's select number two. So we have um, you know, our current task here, task number zero is to go to the grocery store, so why don't we select number zero. And now if we list our things again, we notice there's no task. So it successfully removed it from the array, and that's good. And now the final thing to test is our quit function. So let's just go ahead and press number four. And we notice it exits it, or it exits out of the loop and it says goodbye. So there we have it. We have a fully working to-do list app and I hope that you guys learned something and enjoy this video. Comment down below any you know thoughts or suggestions for the next video. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.